Brett, this place is phenomenal. Tell me about Made Lab and what you guys are doing here. Hey, uh, Made Lab stands for Modern Apparel Development and Education. And uh, we basically started this facility to be an R&D house for printing. We wanted to test fabrics uh, for clothing manufacturers and be able to test inks and consumables uh, just to make sure that we could help make the best products possible for people in the garment decorating space. And then as we kind of developed this idea, I've been educating for other companies like Ryanet for the last five years and had taught a lot of people how to screen print. And as their company was evolving and as this idea was growing, it became apparent that maybe we should be doing education through Made Lab as well. And so we started the idea of uh, creating classes and creating curriculums through Made Lab. And so over the course of, of the next year and the next couple of years, we'll be creating all kinds of curriculum from Screen Pro 101 classes all the way to like high level certifications and all kinds of stuff like that for the screen printing industry. Yeah, I mean, it looks completely amazing. Can you show me some of the newest equipment? Absolutely, we've got all kinds of great, uh, latest and greatest toys here. So let's go check out the screen room. Let's do it. So this is a clean screen coming out of the end of the Lotus Holland reclaim machine. We put it in dirty with ink and emulsion and all that stuff on it. It comes out looking like this. Maybe a little extra tape. It comes out looking like this, ready to degrease and uh, then dry and cure it and start the process all over again. As you can see right here, we have a coater. This is a Saudi coater, the Pro Coat. You can actually coat two screens at the same time, which is nice. It allows us to coat a whole lot and be really efficient. A lot of what we do here with testing requires us to make more screens than we really need for, like if we were just doing production, we might only need one screen for a job, but since we're doing testing, we'll make a whole bunch of screens for a project uh, so that we can test different mesh counts, different types of inks, uh, the same art on it to see how it reacts with different types of print methods. Super cool. And then behind us here, uh, the Saudi laser. So the Saudi laser is like the coolest new technology in screen printing. Essentially, it is a direct screen that uses lasers to expose the screen. Typically in the screen making process, we are going to print ink or wax onto a screen and then we're going to shine a light onto that screen and that light is going to expose all the emulsion except for what is covered by that ink or wax. And this machine exposes all that area but without having to mask it by ink or wax by using lasers that know just to expose the areas where the image is not on the screen. Using a pure photopolymer emulsion, this laser device will image two screens at the same time and it'll take two minutes. So you're gonna average one minute per screen that is both screens imaged and exposed. Any idea on the price on this unit? This beauty is gonna run you around $100,000, but at the level if you're imaging north of 75 screens a day, 100 screens a day or more, um, I think the ROI will, yeah. will do the damage for you. How, how's the detail on it? Compared to wax, is it superior? Is it similar? So the resolution is about twice as high as wax. This machine here is an auto developer, so it's basically just a pressure washer inside of a chamber. So we put the screen here. It goes inside the chamber, pressure washes on both sides, and comes out developed. So Brett, this is more the kind of press I'm used to. I have a, a P10. Um, tell us a little bit about the Rock U and also like the dryer. So we wanted to have a, a Rock U in the lab. This is, this is for us to run jobs, like normal jobs that like you would run in your shop. We'll never run a long run job here, like 
Anything that we ever print might be anywhere from like 50 to 150 pieces or something like that. Mm -hmm. Because our goal is not never to print jobs for other people. It's just for us to test uh, stability of garments or stability of inks and that type of thing. And so we just need to be able to test, okay, we're gonna print this ink for an hour. We're gonna print these shirts for an hour. And we're gonna make sure um, that they, they print right. And so we just wanted to have a press that everyone would have in their print shop, just a very attainable regular press um, so that we could prove that concept on any product. That's very cool. And uh, the thing that always surprises me when I'm printing on different garments is how to deal with discharge and water base. Obviously, some brands are going to do a better job than others. But what have you learned uh, as far as techniques for discharge and water base and controlling colors and color accuracy? I think with discharge and water base, you know, there's there's different variables at play. A big variable at play is, is moisture in the air, humidity levels, like knowing your humidity levels, where you are in the country. Um, having a humidistat in your print shop is really important. Different types of water-based ink react differently. Putting the proper additives in the ink for, for where you are and, and your climate is really important. Running with your palettes really hot is important. Uh, we wanna always keep our palettes really warm. That's gonna help the ink and the viscosity of the ink and help it lay down really nice. Um, keeping your, your screens flooded properly, um, using a decent amount of pressure. Um, there's, there's just so many uh, pieces of that, uh, of that puzzle um, that are hard to explain in a, in a really quick uh, a sentence, um, but it is something that we wanna do a deep dive in and actually teach a, a, a two-day seminar on later this year. So oh, cool. you should come out and hang out with us and we'll, we'll spend a lot of time talking about it. That's awesome. And then this giant dryer, is this the Sahara? This is the Rock Sahara. So this is the latest technology from Rock and their gas dryers. It's very important to us for, for what we're doing to have a nice gas dryer. Gas dryers have the best curing. So being able to cure shirts properly whether it's water-based discharge, plastisol, special effects, inks, just making sure that we're, we know for a fact that what we're curing um, is going down the dryer, is gonna come out the other side and be cured properly is very important. Now, we're actually uh, working on getting a smaller electric dryer in here so that to make sure that we have um, all the things that anybody would have in their print shop. So if people are having problems that we can repeat them here and yeah. make sure that like, oh, you're having this problem, whether that be scorching or whether that be uh, ink stability issue or something like that, we can repeat it here and try to solve those problems for people that are at their print shops struggling with issues. Cool, very cool. Yeah, the industry definitely needs somebody who has like the right answers because it's just a endless sea of like opinions. So it's awesome that there's gonna be a whole facility trying to give people like a standard to meet. Absolutely. So this seems to be the biggest press that you guys have in the facility. Tell me about the oval and some of its abilities. Yeah, so this is a Rock Oval Pro. Uh, it's a 26 station press with 12 print heads. And uh, ovals are an extremely versatile press. They allow you to do a lot of different things. One neat thing about them is they're expandable. So if you're in a shop, you thought you might need more print heads later on, you can actually add print heads to it. You can actually add sections to the press to make it longer to give it more stations and more print heads. And then you can add a lot more attachments to it. A lot of people get oval presses, especially in the water-based world, when you need more cool-down stations. A lot of water-based printing, you use a lot of flashes, a lot of cool-downs in order to really build up really good water-based prints. Another good reason to have this oval uh, is we're gonna be getting the Rock Digital print head. And uh, so that will roll in um, at the end of the press and we'll be doing a lot of testing with the Rock Digital print head and be able to be a, a great resource to other Rock printers that uh, will be purchasing those and, uh, and just be able to really dial in a, more research on hybrid printing.